The great game of football starts like any other program, where at the very beginning it teaches us development of the child, following the goals like creating a fun environment, learning the value of encouraging confidence, teamwork, and sportsmanship. This started several years ago in the termite division and our man named Harry Little that first came up with the idea of having this six and seven year old division. Amen. It is now expanded to 14 teams with no weight limit. Welcome to Collinwood Field for the 2021 termite championship game between the Guinea Elite Spartans and the Collinwood Cogros. Hi, my name is Tim Wells and my partner John Good is in the house and John, Obviously, when we talk about this young age group, we're always thinking, hey, are they going to run the right way? But we're finding out that it's, they're a lot better than that. Yes, they are, Tim. It's a great introduction to the game of uh, in this division. You guys have a great, great time. The coaches are some of the best that we have in the league because – this is the first introduction to the game of football. You want the kids to have a, a pleasant time, a welcoming intro to athletics. And so these guys have all the patience in the world uh, dealing with the, the players, the parents, and they grow up to be some fine, fine young people. Uh, we're looking forward to a very exciting game, Tim, in the playoff series where these two teams have had a successful season. And you're going to see them uh, on the upper levels as well playing in the championship games. And obviously, when you look at the two teams, they come in here pretty good at that. Guinea Leaf Spartans will be in the black and green. The Collinwood Cobras in the blue and white. Tell me a little bit about the Guinea Leaf Spartans, John. Uh, the Guinea Leaf Spartans is ran by uh, Darius Hiley, a, a, a very respected uh, football person in this uh, area as a player and now as the owner of his own organization as a coach. They finished the regular season 5-1, and one, Tim. 8-1 overall, including the playoffs. Uh, Malcolm Hill, Hills is the head coach and offensive coordinators, and the defense is led by Charles Brown, the uh, fourth. So these guys have put together a great team, and we're looking forward to a good uh, performance by them today. And on the other side, the Collinwood Cobras, 6-0, 8-0. They haven't been beaten, but they're going to feel their toughest challenge today. Let's talk about them. Yeah, Collinwood Cobras, uh, led by Darnell Banks and uh, his organization, uh, a young organization, but very successful in their initial years in Muni football. This team is led by Damon Jones, uh, with Tyler Stafford as the offensive coordinator and Karan Davis as the defensive coordinator. These guys have put together a great mix of players uh, like Jones, Logan, and Davis uh, that's led them to this championship game. Well... As you can see, teams are ready to go. It's championship time. And without further ado, we're going to go over to our PA announcer, Jason Dunn. Welcome to the Collinwood Athletic Complex. For today's 2021 Termite Division Championship game between the American Conference Champions, Guinea Lee Spartans, and your National Conference Champions, the Collinwood Cobras. So we're going to start this championship day off right with the player introductions. First, from the Collinwood Cobras. Number one, I'm sorry, number two, Bryce Jones. Number four, Keyshawn Davis. Number six, Kalen Ward. Number seven, Caden Irons. Number eight, Deion Lewis. Number nine, Carter Studdire. Number 10, Rayer Hagwood. Number 11, Blake Jones. Number 12, Amarion Fountain. Number 13, Demarion Walker. Number 14, Cordell Stewart. Number 15, Diaz Williams. Number 16, Lion Adams. Number 17, Kelvin Hood. 
Number 18, Zavion Cheatham. Number 19, Andre Wagner. Number 20, Lamel Logan. Number 21, Tyler Stafford Jr. Number 24, Amir Satterwhite. Number 25, Thomas Dontavious. Number 27, Vincent Maxwell. Number 28, Carter Chambers. Number 29, Mayo Cordier. Number 30, Azari Woodward. Woodard. Number 31, Jaden Dodds. Number 34, Zayden Smith. Number 32, Brandon Johnson Jr. And number five, Jace Primes. The Collinwood Cobras was coordinated by Darnell Banks, head coach Damon Jones, defensive coordinator Karan Davis, offensive coordinator Tyler Stafford, assistants Ahmad Jones, Marcus Perkins, and Douglas Lewis. Collinwood Cobras. Now for the player introductions for the Guinea Lee Spartans. Number one, Jalen Maxwell. Number two, Brennan Patterson. Number three, Mark Johnson. Number four, Elijah Burt. Number five, Carter Hendrick. Number six, Arnold Nickley. Number seven, Elijah Smith. Number eight, Jordan Contreras Jr. Number nine, Charles Brown. Number 10, Tremaine Gilson. Number 11, Tal Dootley. Number 13, Jaden Shropshire. Number 14, Maurice Jackson. Number 15, Daylon Adams. Number 16, Cameron Thornton. Number 21, Darrell Smith. Number 22, Tamira Motley. And number 23, Legend Clayton. The Guinea Lee Spartans are coordinated by Darius Hiley, head coach Malcolm Hills, assistant Narvell Arnold, coach Carlos, Charles Brown, Kenny Maxwell, Latina Harris, Denzel Smith Sr., and Larry Burke. 2021 Kenny Lee Sparks. At this moment, I'm going to ask that everybody rise for the plan of the national anthem.
We are moments away from championship action right here from Collinwood Field where it's the Termite Division, ages six and seven. But before we begin, we're gonna take a look at the officials that'll be calling today's game. Again, they are certified through the Ohio High School Athletic Association. On the left is Carlton Darrell. He'll be our referee. He's a 1985 graduate of Benedictine, 19 years as a football official, and he's retired from the city of Cleveland. In the middle is Mel Parker. He's our line judge, 1988 graduate of aviation, 16 years as a football official. And on the right, it's Craig Pierce, the head linesman, a 1985 graduate of John Hay High School and seven years as a football official, and his professional career is a chef. But John, when you look at these officials, a pretty good crew, but they're gonna have some special rules that they'll be dealing with. Yes, they do, Tim. As you can see on the screen right there, there will be a coach on the field for each team on offense and defense. We'll play eight minutes, uh, regulation clock, four timeouts per game and one additional timeout in the OT. No kickoffs, ball starts on the 35 yard line. There's no punts either. You advance the ball 20 yards if you don't go for it on fourth down. And the score is traditional, six points. Uh, for a touchdown, safety is two points. Uh, the ball will be placed at the middle of the field for extra points. If you kick it, we reward you with two points. And if you just run a pass it in, it's one point. Those extra points are very, very, very important in a game of this magnitude. So as we said from the start of the ball game, the Guinea lead had the coin toss. They deferred in Collinwood Cobras. They are the ones that will be starting on offense. So let's take a look, first of all, at the Collinwood Cobras starting offense. Starting with their line, it'll be left tackle Brandon Johnson Jr., number 32. And again, he'll be number five. That's a change in the number for Brandon Johnson Jr. You've got Jamel Logan, the left guard, number 20. Their center is Kalen Ward. The right guard is Amirian Fonten, number 12. Demirian Walker is number 13, the right tackle. Caden Irons is number seven. He's the tight end. And number 14, the wide receiver, Cordell Stewart. They're led by their all-star quarterback, Blake Jones, number 11. In the slot will be Carter Studmeyer. The running backs are number four which is a key player for them. Kishan Davis and Deion Lewis is the other running back, number eight. Defensively, we'll give them to you the first chance we get with the Guinea Lead Spartans. Yeah, this would be a great game, Tim, today. Both of these teams led their division, won their division in the regular season, and they're both on the top of the uh, stats in the uh, in, in, in offense and in defense. Again, elite in defense only allowing 3.1 points per game. And Collinwood averaging 26.2 points per game. So they say defense wins championships, and we'll see if again elite can slow this high-powered Cobra offense down today. And also, Jan, when we talk about the coaches on the field, there's two coaches that they put on, one that kind of helps with the line, the other one helps with the backs. If you choose to do so, you can have two coaches on the field. Some, some teams elect to just have one. Depends on how comfortable you are with those guys out there on the field uh, by themselves. A lot of teams run it with no coaches. So the first penalty of the ball game goes to the Collinwood Cobras on a false start. Again, the the temperature right now is in the 50s, and we are saying that we are saying that the uh, no rain is in the forecast right now. We're hoping to get through this before the rain comes in. So first down, 15. And wow. in there with a big tackle was the right defensive tackle, that was Tamar Motley, number 22. 
Yeah, that ball was carried by Blake Jones. They wanted to get off a good play, a, a real safe play to eliminate any turnovers. Uh, but he was met with force by the defense of the Guinea Lee Spartans. They blitzed on that play too, Tim. And again, and then obviously when you're when you're uh, looks like he's up and he's going off okay, that's the good sign. So it'll be second down. We'll call it 19. As we, after this play, we'll take a look at the key players for the Collinwood Cobras. They got, they got some good ones too. Oh, a little Aaron snap, but quarterback's able to get it, corral it, and get some positive yards. In the left outside linebacker, Elijah Bird. But John, let's talk about the. Those key players from Collinwood, and it starts off with their quarterback, number 11. Yep, that's number 11, quarterback and line, uh, a left outside linebacker, Blake Jones. He's aggressive, good tackler. He can throw the ball, and he keeps his composure. He's got a cool head. Number 20, the left guard and left defensive tackle, Lamel Logan. He's a force up the middle on defense, an excellent blocker, and we like to. They like to run him behind. They like to run behind him and. Lastly, we have number four running back right outside linebacker Keyshawn Davis, elusive runner, can break one anytime. So again, they go right behind the left tackle for the Collinwood Cobras. And now with it being fourth down and 10, they have a decision to make. Do they want to go with the automatic punt roll? or are they going to go for it? And it looks like they've decided to go with the automatic punt rule, which means we're going to move it up 20 yards. There'll be 15 seconds. It'll be taken off the clock. And that's a good decision this early in the ball game. You don't want to lose conf your team's confidence and giving the Spartans the ball in your territory. So they'll barely cross the 50 to the 45. And they'll, the Spartans will start uh, offense of their initial possession of the game right from there. So it'll be first down and 10. And this is the, free, the Guinea lead Spartans come in here, ranked number four in offense. So they've only scored about 16, average of 16 points per game. And then when you look at the key players for the Guinea lead Spartans, Pretty good ones at that as well, John. Yeah, number two running back and right outside linebacker uh, Brennan Patterson plays with a lot of energy, tough to bring down. Uh, he's the leader. Number three running back and left inside linebacker Mark Johnson is athletic, tough, puts in a lot of dirty work. And lastly, number four wide receiver and left outside linebacker Elijah Burke. Biggest player can change the game. Part of our good linebackers who can tackle. So they tried to run behind that left tackle, Jordan Kateris, but again, they weren't going to have anything to do with it as Keyshawn Davis came up to make the stop. Just a good job right there by Davis shutting down that hole and bringing him down for a minimal gain. Spartans have got to do a better job of blocking than that to keep this uh, Collinwood defense at bay. Second down and nine. And now we've got another penalty, and they're going to say it's on the defense. Yeah, it looked like that left outside linebacker, excuse me, right outside linebacker on defense. He lined up offside. No one, <laughs> the referee didn't have any mercy either to tell him to get back. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I know it's a championship game and all that, but at this level, preventive may, um, uh, officiating really is something they need to talk about. So it'll be second down. We'll call it four. No score, just underway. First quarter action from Collinwood. Right up the middle again. They went right behind their center and nothing doing. As the Collinwood Cobra as Lamar, Lamar Logan and Demarion Walker were right there to handle it. In fact, it was a loss of one. Man, he's a tough load in the middle there, Tim. You can see him right there just 
just mauling the offensive guard and the, uh, the center to get to the ball carrier. He's hyped up. He's ready to play. So here we go. They're going to try to run it and get it to the outside. This could be, and he's brought down from behind. And again, it was number four that came up on the stop. And that was Keyshawn Davis. Yeah, excellent job by Keyshawn. You can see, folks, that young man is not afraid of contact at only six years old. Excellent pursuit. He never stopped. He came all the way over from his right side of the defense and able to bring him down for a, a small game. So they get a hole up the middle, and he's going to break to the outside. He's uh -oh. going to get more than uh -oh. that. Uh -oh. Looks like he's going to break one here, Jack. Wow. And I catch him. Oh, he's awesome. gone to the house. Wow. <laughs> Brendan Patterson showing why he's a key player. Coach said he plays with energy and he showed plenty of energy on that run, Till. You take a look at it here, folks. Number two, just slippery. Doing an excellent job of making guys miss. Made two guys miss right there. Look at his toughness, that strength. Wow. Coach said he plays with energy and he showed plenty of it on that play. Good job, young man. And again, you look at the key player, Brendan Patterson. Wow, league all-star, and he showed why right there. So they'll go for the extra point here. And again, remember at this level, the extra point on a runner passes one. I don't think we'll see anybody kick it at this level. So it'll definitely be, if they were to kick, it would be worth two, but I don't see anybody. I, I know that I couldn't kick it at six. I'd be lucky if I'd be out here playing at six. I, know. I tell you what, Tim, I don't know where these Spartans get these players from, but they have guys who can run. They are very good ball carriers. They know how to make people miss on all levels. On every level, I watch them play. They just, they just have a knack, I guess, for either finding these guys or they coach them up. They're tough. They know how to run through people, uh, no matter what the age is. So congratulations to that, to that coaching staff uh, of the Guinea League Sparks. He said he's in. And the coaches are all excited, chest pumping <laughs> up in the air. Uh, just do an excellent job. They know how important it is to get that that extra point in the championship game. That could be the big difference when it comes down to the nitty gritty. So it was Jalen Maxwell that came in with the extra point. If I had it right. Good job, Jalen. Good job. He's a student over at St. Benedict. That was the Browns. They say that the, the, the defense wins championships and Guinea Elite sits on top of the termite division uh, defense stats. As I mentioned before, they only give up 3.1 points per game. So the Cobras have their work cut out for them. They have a high-powered offense averaging a uh, number one stat of 26.2 points per game. And uh, they need to answer uh, that elite score. So the Cobras will take over. This will be their second time with the football. It'll be first and 10 from the 35. 4.05 to go here in the first quarter. Get in the backfield and brought down in the backfield. Wow. There's that gang tackling Tim more than one man to the football. Those guys know how to swarm. I've already mentioned how they can run real well. Uh, not just on this termite level, but on all levels, as you will witness during this, during this championship uh, season. You can see two of them right there, gang tackling. And that's Cameron down. Thornton, man. That left defensive tackle. I'll tell you, when you look at the tackling here early in the ball game, that's something to keep an eye on, but you, you got to give Guinea Lee. They're, they're making their tackling. They sure are. They're bringing them down right there, John. Get to the outside and brought down. Well, 
here it is. The Cobra just going to get a quarterback keeper trying to get one of their top players on the outside one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker or a defensive back. But the elite Spartans does do such a good job of swarming. There's always more than one man uh, out there to bring down the ball carrier. That was Carter Kendrick and Cameron Thornton on the tackle. Third down and nine. Again, the Collinwood Cobras were ranked number one in the league in offense, scoring 26 points per game. The defense was ranked number eight, giving up 14 points per game. But again, when you're taking the number one offense against the number one defense, Backward oh. pass, backward pass, John. Sure was a lateral, Tim. Sure who looked got like it. got on it? Looks like the Cobras. Did they get it back? Looks like they, they got it back. Apparently they recovered the ball. Wow, that was, wow. I thought that uh, the Spartans came up with that, but there's the backward the, pass. It went back. It wasn't quite on the money. Looks like here. Oh, no, he got it. Yeah. Collinwood recovered it. Yes. So fourth down and 12. Now it's a decision time again. Do they go to the automatic punter? They're going to go for it. It looks like they're going to go for it, too. Sure does. I can't. I can't. I don't understand this call. I would be really get that offense off the field so you can talk to him about putting together a, a good package of plays for the next possession. This is pretty dangerous with this talented Spartan team taking a chance on fourth down. Especially when that pass play didn't go too well. Almost turned it over. And he passed, man's wide open. Oh! Wow, he was open. Yeah, and then uh, number four came up, Elijah Burt. But again, don't agree with it, John. I don't agree with it, but hey, they might know something we don't know. Although a lot of coaches, they, uh, they feel like, hey, we got to go for it. You know, you got to take those chances when you're playing against a good team. He does a good job by Burt on that play. Uh, dropping back into coverage and getting a hand on that ball, deflecting it away from the ball carrier. So with 1.42 to go here in the first quarter, the elite Spartans will be on offense. Yeah, It'll be first down and 10. They'll start off in, uh, in Cobra territory too. So they won't have far to go. The Cobra's defense has really got to step up right here. As the Cobra's defense is average uh, 14.1 points per game. I think you mentioned that before, Tim. They, that's, uh, that's not a good recipe when you're playing against the number one defense. First down and 10 from the 34. Handoff, gonna try to get outside. There, there, and there's our first little tissue on the field. On a running play, and they're gonna call a hold. They called offensive holding. But you gotta believe they're gonna accept that penalty. So it should be first down and 20. And that'll move it back to the 44, 45 yard line. Yeah, that was Burt on the carry for, for the Spartans that time. I believe it was number four. He's showing up uh, all over the place. These coaches are moving guys around a lot early in this ball game. You see number one is going to line up. They line up real tight, too. So I think this, this is going to be a muscle play right up the middle. Unless they're trying to draw them all in. You got the corners out here that that's not defending anybody. They should be in tighter. False start. Back 
him up five more. So, John, when you're dealing with this age group, those plays with motion and, and the second count and all that, doesn't that invite the opportunity for those two? Yeah, it, it does invite opportunity for mistakes, Tim. Uh, but a lot of these coaches, they, they believe they've they practiced with their kids long enough, they've drilled into them that discipline, and they'll try it. But it's just different in game situations. Kid, the kids at this level, this age, they have so many other things on their mind. <laughs> it's kind of tough for, tough for them to focus in, that laser focus you need in order to get a playoff on second count. Uh, he, or the motions. He went uh, right past the right tackle, and he picked up a few yards on the tackle for the Collinwood team was Caden Irons, number seven, and that play ends the first quarter. Again, the Collinwood Cobras and again Elite Spartans, and again a uh, close first uh, first quarter, John. We've seen a little bit of uh, speed, you know, on the Guinea Lee team as well as the Collinwood Cobras taking some risks, and it seems uh, right now it hasn't hurt them. No, it hasn't, Tim. But the Cobras have really got to settle down and, and get a good offensive series going here after they can stop this Spartan offense. Uh, Spartan's offense has just got some big play guys. It's, right now we're looking at a second down and, a, and about – uh, 12, I think, yards to go for a first down after the uh, Elite has shot themselves in the foot with two big penalties. Uh, but I'm looking looking for them to co actually convert on this. I'm predicting they'll convert on this. They, got, they just have too, much ex too many explosive weapons. Well, again, it'll be second down and 20. And again, uh, the Cobras will be going from right from left to right on your screen. And Guinea Leet is the one going from right to left. And this is uh, it's the first time Guinea Leet had to go a ways. Uh, I think that's a legal motion again. Going offside Ball, defense. Offside defense. Okay. Wow. I didn't see that. But hey, I know the uh, Spartans will say thank you and make it a little bit more manageable. Second down. Still looking at 14 yards to go for the first down. Again, one of the keys for Guinea Elite was we must win line play, control the tempo. Mm -hmm. You try to get outside. Wow, good job making the guy miss. That's good what stiff they arm. didn't want to have happen. Yup, first down yeah. and touchdown. Can't stop him. <laughs> He's doing his little dance. Is that, is that the Odell Beckham deal right there? <laughs> Nice little celebration there. They get into the end zone. Number get, four. That was number four for Guinea Elite. That was Elijah Burt. Yep. Elijah Burt with a real nice run to the right side right there. It shows patience. He gets the football, makes a man miss right there. Just a good cut. Another good cut and a stiff arm. Again, those jewels that Darius Heidi and his coaching staff have in their arsenal. They got a lot of guys that can run, Tim. I, it's been a long time since I've seen uh, this many players that, can, that have running ability uh, like the Spiders. And like I said, they have it on all levels. Let's take a good look right there at Elijah Burt. And again, Elijah Burt is a student over at St. Vincent de Paul. Loves, loves the Steelers. And Come on, Burt. Elijah. Man, I bet you it's That's all right. That's all right. Give him a couple more years yeah. when the Browns do a little thumping and it will be okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I bet his mom or dad is probably a Steeler fan, too. Been and they're infiltrated. walking this back for the unsportsmanlike, and I'm sure it was those little shenanigans in the end zone. Yeah. 
shenanigans. Referees, they frown on shenanigans. They want you to, you know, show good sportsmanship, and we do too. Well, you know where they pick that up, John. They pick it up on that Sunday TV yeah. show they call NFL football, <laughs> and they let them get away with it. They figure, oh, this is cool. Let me try this one, you know. Yeah, yeah. Can't do it in this level. No. So, no, it could lead to too many other things. So now it'll be a uh, long try. It'll start from the 17 for the try. Oh, wow. Almost got in the backfield with the Cobra. And oh, there's a face mask right there. Now he's going to go the other way. And he's hit right there. He's brought down. The, referee, uh, the coach is pointing out that he th thought his player was hit late. Brennan Patterson on the ball here. So after all this, they will go back, get another try when he walks it off here. We'll put it right back where it was originally, where it was supposed to go originally. You know when they uh, when you're out when you're out in the open, as they say. And they see that head go one way that it ain't supposed to go. It usually means you're in trouble. <laughs> Am I right, partner? It sure, it sure does. Yes, it does. Oh, got an official stopping the game. Is it, is it equipment deal? Or? The ball, okay. They had the wrong spot for the ball, so they'll mm -hmm. push the ball back. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Hopefully they'll settle down and clean this up. All right, he's going to try to throw. Oh, yeah. Right down. Nothing doing. There it is, number 12. From the Collinwood Cobras, Amirian Fountain. So they don't get the extra point. Good job, Mr. Fountain. Let's go. So it'll be first down and 10 on the 35 yard line. Was it Fontaine? Good job. Good looking young man there, Officer Gardner, middle linebacker, and he, he brought the nasty on that play. I'll tell you, that, that's an amazing thing when you're looking at number 12. He's from Blue Stone, second grader. And uh, uh, now there's a Browns man, Odell Beckham. That's all right, I'm with that one. <laughs> we also want to remind you folks that as we go through the game today, we want you to be a part of it as we'll be selecting the outstanding player, both offense and defense. And we'll see if you can match the wits of our Luxor stat crew. And we will have both head coaches at halftime to get their views and what they're planning here for the second half. So a long way to go. Yeah, the, the Cobras can't can't afford to fall too far too far behind uh, these Spartans with a number one defense. They get the momentum, they can, it can snowball on you. Good hit right there. A five yard run. It'll be second down and five. You see right here, quarterback direct snap, he tries the right side and then he just pushed down. Didn't quite see him. Right there by number 11 for the Spartans. Excellent tackle by Tal Dudley, John Muir, school, Kareem Hunt, and Browns fan.
There's another good one. We can check him off. He's good. <laughs> Again, uh, 6.53 to go here in the second quarter. Got another flag. This guy's going to go to the Oh, outside. my goodness. What a play oh, to have a flag. Now with Cobra saying, we can do wow. this, too. We can do this, too. Oh, you got it. They brought him all the way down oh, to the 10. But keep in mind, we have a flag on the play. And they're going to call an illegal shift. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, he looks like he's in pain. He is down, and they're now waiting for the... Uh, you can see right here, Tim, as number four for the uh, Cobras. Oh, there it is. Both of them moving at the same mm -hmm. time. You can see it Man. right there. They start just a smidgen. That's, that's, that's a little yeah, suspect. You better believe it. That's Six, seven-year-olds. Yeah. Uh, I want to see what happens to Jones at the end of this play that he got hurt. He gets pulled down from behind and slammed on his back. And, wow, I think he slammed his head. He's grabbing, look like he's grabbing the back of his head. And that's a common injury. Uh, on all levels uh, on this turf when the guy gets his head slammed into the turf especially the back of the head that can be very painful but he looks all right he's a little wobbly I'll tell you what, he looks like he's trying to see a look on him. Yeah, he's trying to shake it off. He's a tough young man. All you six, and six seven, and eight-year-olds who are watching this and sitting at home, didn't play football this year, hey, come on out and, and join this. Join a team in your area. You can... Uh, Go to our website and see all the organizations and see where they're located and choose one. Parents, get them out of the house. Let them, you know, come out and get some exercise and meet new people and get coached up in this game. We have a good time and I'm pretty sure they'll enjoy it and you will too. So second down, 15. The long run is negated by the penalty. Oh, good looking there. play, but even better defense. Oh, no, he got away from the tackle. Wow. Excellent effort on both sides of the ball on that play. Good job by the receiver. First catching the ball and then eluding the tackle. I thought he was dead to rights, Tim. Yeah, he's got him. And then he breaks that tackle. Couldn't get him down. Can't tackle him up high. And then the other guy comes down and hits him from behind. Again, number four from Termites, Elijah Burt on the tackle. Elijah's everywhere. And now you're talking third and five. That was a gain of eight. Good job by Keyshawn Davis. Cobra's trying to get something going here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See how fast they get to the ball, Tim? I mean, they just close real quick. I mean, it's no big surprise that these guys are number one defense in the in their, in their, in their, in their, in the league, in their division. Just unbelievable. So they're going to use the automatic punt rule here, which will move it up 20 yards, and it'll take off 15 seconds. But yeah, Brendan Patterson comes up and makes a big play. We've been calling his name not only on the offensive side with the touchdown, on the on the defensive side as well. 
He's had a decent ball game so far, John. Yeah, he's uh, showing why he's one of the key players and an all star uh, in this league. And he's just got a bright future, Tim. He's got a bright future. Dudley also in on that tackle, who's put up a great, great performance so far in this football game. Folks, we want to remind you that next week on TV 20, we'll have the big boys. It's the Bantamweight division where the West Side Wolverines will take on the Sims Raiders Showtime. And I'll tell you what, you're looking for some talented players. I'm telling you, they seem like they have been swarming to those Bantamweight kids, the high school coaches. Every time that these teams play, you see a lot of high school coaches out there looking for players to get the good grades and got the good attitudes. Yes, they do, Tim. And that Wolverine team is going to be a real treat to watch. They're, they're just as big as some freshman high school teams out here. So now, Guinea Lee will take over the ball, first down at the 46-yard line. Here's a blitz from the outside coming. There it goes. They went the other way. Oh, I don't want to get him outside again. Oh, he got out there. And he's running. He's getting he's out got, there. He's got to ask for it. Oh! And he turned on another level. Tell me, he put in another gear. Number five, Wow. Just a, just not a, not a good job of the outside in on that right side of keeping contained. As you take a look at it here, Tim Hendricks just turned it to a turn, turn it up another gear right there. He was able to outflank the entire defense. You can see right there, number four, who's been saving the day all, all day for the Cobras, making big plays on defense, but not this time. They got a block on him, and that young man was able to scoot him to the end zone. There you are. There's the tremendous player. Again, number five, Kendrick Hendrick, a student over at St. Benedict, a Browns and a Jarvis Landry man. All right. I'll tell you what, they got a lot of speed on this team, John. And, yeah. and now you understand why the coach said to us as one of the keys, we must contain the outside run. And that has not happened here. As soon as they get out there, you can't let them in. They're too fast. Yeah, they are, Tim. And, and, and you saw that great effort down the field by the uh, by the rest of his teammates trying to get him a block. You saw number four, Keyshawn Davis, trying to make a play uh, on, on Carter but wasn't able to do so because of the efforts of the wide receivers to uh, to block it. So good teamwork on that Spartan offense. So we got a little laundry again on the field. You know, last week I asked them, how many penalties have we had in this game so far? And it might be, uh, might be setting a record the way we're going. <laughs> I know. It's like every other play, it almost seems like. But the Collarwood Cobras coaching staff has got to do has got to do a good job of keeping his guys, you know, their guys in the game. Keep fighting. There's a long way to go. We got four minutes left to go in this quarter. Cobras will be getting the football in, an, in another half to be played yet. So a lot can ha go on in that time period. Every time, Doc. Every time. Every time. All right. So they don't get the extra point. But with 4.06 to go, it's been all the Guinea Lead Spartans as they lead here 19 0. And the Callawood Cobras are going to have to rely on that number one offense to get a big play and get it moving for them. And again, you realistically think that, John, when you got to go in at halftime, you got to be talking about how do we stop the outside run? We've got to make an adjustment to stop them from going in outside because it's just hurting them too much. Yeah, and the coach can't play the game for you. So he's going to have to get the defensive end uh, of, the, of the Cobras, get them dialed in. Jaden Jaden Dodds and uh, Caden Irons. Uh, those two guys have got to take on the personal responsibility of making sure that nobody gets outside of them. And they need help from from uh, Cheetah and Lewis, those corners 
or that play outside them, as well as Jones and Davis, the outside linebackers, uh, to make sure that they turn their plays back inside so they can limit the gains of the, of the elite offense. So first down and 10. Pick up of about four yards. Got an official's timeout. And it looks like one of the players is down. It looks like uh, Dalen, Dalen Adams made the tackle, but I'm trying to get a number of the person that's down. And again, the uh, coach is with them to make sure they're doing it. So while they're getting them, First of all, I'd like to let you know that, again, over at uh, all our recreation centers, it's getting close to that time of the year where we're getting closer to the holidays. And uh, first of all, there'll be a holiday play that will take place on December 10th over at the Little Theater. And again, it's a, a nice play that the kids do. And it's this theme this year is Holiday Dreams, as well as as football season comes to an end, obviously, we're now getting ready to sign up for the basketball program for all ages, boys and girls. You might want to contact your local recreation center, so the ones that are in the Collinwood area. You can pick up the phone right now and call 420-8323. And if you're in the Glenville area, it's 664-2516. Good job by the defense. Holding him down. That man, Davis, again, trying to get outside, but nothing doing. Elite just running way too fast and taking care of their personal responsibilities of not letting that not letting the ball carry get outside. So Elijah Burt came up and made the stop. So now third down and four. They need to keep this drive going, John. You got three minutes to go here in the quarter. Yeah, I think if the, as long as they keep the ball on the ground, Tim, uh, I think they'll they'll be okay. They just have to pick a positive yard. This is third down and manageable right here. Quarterback, can he get outside? Oh, good move. Tried to stutter step again. He got the first down. Clock will keep on running. Right, as you take a look at it here, quarterback just keeps the ball. Blake Jones and just turns the outside. Gives a good move right there. A little stutter step there. Able to pick up a little few more yards and for the whole host of uh, Spartans able to bring him down. Here's the young man, their quarterback. I like that, got a tie on, got his Cobra hat. I tell you, he looked like he's ready for business. And he looked like he's ready for business on that last play, trying to lead the Cobras down the field for their first score with 148 left to go in the first half. A little mix up on the handoff, but an excellent effort right there by Keyshawn. Davis. You know, you always say that one of the best ways to stop a team that's got that kind of spark offense is to keep them off the field. And this is a clear place where it can be done. I mean, the Cobras have had some opportunities and they have shown some spots of uh, speed. And you're seeing here they're going to call a timeout. Yeah, this is a good timeout. Absolutely. And then the other thing is, you know, you talk about 
Earlier we were talking about Blake Jones, the uh, second grader over at St. Jerome's. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, this guy wants to become a fireman. You know, he's got a little vision of what he'd like to be. I like that. I like yeah. that. He wants to serve the community. And John, you've uh, you've seen a lot of kids, you know, at all levels playing football, and obviously. You know, you're talking about a six and seven year old. They got a lot of education before they get to junior high mm -hmm. and even high school. But even at this level, stressing the academics, isn't this part of what the coaches are trying to do in mini football as well? Yes, yes, Tim. Academics is is, is number one. Uh, all, all, all student athletes in our league must turn in a report card to their head coaches and they must be in good standing uh, in order to, uh, to participate. Uh, they work with the parents, uh, making sure that there's plenty of time for studying, uh, getting that work done, and uh, the parents communicate with the coaches and let them know if they are having a serious issue with their kid in the classroom. And they will hold them out from practice so they can get that work done. I think this spot gives them another first down. If not, it's close. It is real close. And they're going to give it to him. They're going to give it good. Good, think. good. Or are they talking about doing? Yeah, they did give him the first. Yeah, Blake Jones just go straight up heads up play uh, to get the first down. The quarter it was just a quarterback keeper. Snap the ball and get positive yards and got the first down. So this is the first visit in their own territory today, and they go back to it again. It worked the last play. He drags a few defenders with him. Again, clock runs, 40 seconds to go now here in the quarter. So a pickup of nine, second down and one, but more importantly, they got to start thinking end zone here. Got to get this playoff. They're not going to be able to do it. If they don't get, if they're going to be able to get in zone, they'll get this playoff. Hopefully, they will get a score right here. Try to pass it. Man's open. He caught it. Taking a long time. He got to go down fast so they can get a timeout. Three seconds. They have called. I did see the coach signal, and they are going to take a timeout here to give him one more shot at the end zone. Yeah, they pick up the first down. It's a good job right here by, by Jones turning. He had he had a man right in his face too. But just a good job of getting the ball out there, giving his, his man a chance to, to catch the football. Look at that, Tim, in a crowd of three guys. Mm -hmm. the receiver was able to concentrate and bring that ball in. It's you know, a good John, job. You know, good John, job. You were talking about the uh, Guinea League defense, how they're swarming, they're so fast and quick. You see that there also, mm -hmm. you know. But listen, the, the Cobras here in this last drive has shown the ability to move the football. So hopefully, and, I, and if I, uh, if they can do this in the second half where they can maintain these drives, that helps, that should help them. Confidence-wise, this should, should tell me this should be the last play of the half, and it's not starting off too good, and it don't like it's going to end well either. <laughs> As you see right there, number 11 kind of flexes a little bit over the over the run back over the running back Dudley. Uh, he's, he's a little borderline unsportsmanlike right there, but he walked away from the from the Cobra he just tackled and. Now we're going to half. And in a moment, we're going to be talking to the head coach of the Guinea League Spartans, Malcolm Hills. And again, uh, John, first half impressions? All Spartans. All Spartans uh, just doing a good job of, of, of making plays. Like, I, like you just mentioned, swarming on that defense. That defense is for real. Defense wins championships. And, so far, they've blanked the Cobras uh, in this game. We'll see what happens in the second half, what kind of adjustments the Cobras will make. But uh, just an excellent job, all Spartans in the first half. So, Coach, uh, first of all, can you hear us? I can hear you well. 
Well, first of all, our special guest right now at halftime is the head coach of the Guinea Lee Spartans, Malcolm Hills. He's a 1991 graduate of Shaker, 20 years coaching, and the first time he's been the head coach with this organization, the Spartans, and he's really done a nice job with them as well as he participated in his high school and played some football then. Obviously, coach, first half, have to be pleased to be able to move the football. I am. I'm very pleased. I'm more impressed with defensively how the kids have been playing. They've also been controlling the line of scrimmage, which is one of our big things. So I'm real pleased with that. Yeah, we are too, Coach. Uh, you know, we read about you guys being number one in defense. And boy, you're really showing it here today. Uh, just an excellent job by your key players today, Johnson, Burt, uh, Patterson. Uh, but you also you also got some other guys that's in there too that's throwing down as well Gillison and and Motley and Adams and Smith and how about that kid uh, Carter Hendrick he's showing up big today on both sides of the football. Uh, Carter's a great kid. We call him homecoming because he was our homecoming king. The kids picked him as the homecoming king and he's a great leader. He's always been a great example on the football field as well as a good student. So that matters most. That's exactly right, uh, Coach. And we just got finished speaking about that as we closed out the first half, how important academics are. So I'm going to let you go ahead and get ready for the second half. Get those guys, keep them hungry, and uh, we'll talk to you after the game. Guys, I appreciate what you're doing, and thanks for the opportunity. You're welcome. Again, Malcolm Hills, the head coach. And, and John, we talked about, you know, with the keys, he says, no concerns. Hey, it's now I can understand. I mean, you got a swarming defense that really is playing outstanding. Then you got this speed of the other guys in your line. If they, I mean, it, it, I really understand it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and, and, and why have concerns when you've made when you've made it to the championship game and you know you have a defense that's ranked number one, plays like they're number one, half swag like they're number one, and they've shown it right here in this first half. Uh, keeping the Cobras scoreless. This is a team that averages 26 points a game, Tim. And while we're here at halftime, we really would like to take a moment to talk about some of the people that we've lost in the previous years due to the pandemic. And again, obviously, uh, Jip Walker from the Pal 6 Red Dogs organization. What a tremendous coach and things that he did with that organization for kids to get the opportunity to play and do the right things. He's, I can remember when he would go into a school or a parent would call him and say, hey, I need you to help me straighten out my son, and there he was. But also the icon and really a true friend. Uh, I'll, I don't know if I'll ever uh, say to him, you know, hey, I need you one more time. But Joseph Wise Sr. was the former Cleveland Muni football director he also coached in this league. He was part of Nathan Hale, the community. And uh, what a solid individual. We were so blessed to have him lead us and train us so that this program would grow, John. And you look back on, it, on those two, really special. Yeah, I'm going to start off with uh, Joe Wise. Uh, Joe Wise was my first coach uh, that I ever had in, in football. Uh, he was a mountain of a man. Uh, but a heart of gold and uh, just, just, just spectacular. We uh, remained uh, remained friends uh, through through my, my entire life uh, as a mentor. Uh, when I went to college, uh, I would uh, reach out to him from time to time. Uh, when I made it to the NFL, uh, I also reached out to him. And then when I retired and decided to come back home, uh, Joe welcomed me with uh, open arms to come and work. Uh, in Cleveland Muni football. Uh, the first time, I, I must admit, I, I turned him down. I had young kids myself, three boys, and I wanted to concentrate on, on them. And uh, then I got pulled. He came back again and asked me, along with uh, my partner, uh, Joe Record, president of the league, and, uh, and we've, been, we've been together ever since. Uh, uh, Joe is, 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 is highly missed, and uh, uh, Jip, Jip from Pal 6, that's where I played for Pal 6. Uh, just a God-fearing man, a good example in the community. And he's definitely going to be sorely missed as Pal 6 uh, moves forward. Uh, but we're joined now by the president of Cleveland Muni Football, Joe Record. And uh, Joe, talk to us about uh, some of the memories you have with Joe Wise. Well, 
my memory of Joe Wise, he was more of a father figure to me than a coach. He was my first coach um, at Nathan Hale in eighth grade. He taught me how to play basketball, and uh, I was with him the rest of uh, uh, the eighth grade year. The following year, I went over to Benedictine High School and continue on, but he was always my coach. He was my first track coach also, and I ended up being a two-time state high jump champ. He was my first high jump coach, and so I, uh, he followed me all the way through college, and when I moved back to Cleveland, I was with him with the Cleveland Old Timers Basketball League, and uh, at that point, he said, Joe, I have something I need you to do. And I'm like, what's that, coach? He said, look, I need you to take over Muni football for me. I'd like to step down. And I couldn't tell him no. Any, <laughs> anytime Joe asked me to do something, I always did it, other than breaking the law. But it was, it was always yes. Uh, so my memories of him is, uh, like I said, he's more of a, a, a father figure to me. And it was something I didn't find out till later. John is, uh, Joe is our fraternity brother. Yeah, he, he's right. a member of Kappa Alpha Psi. Right. And so it's, it's, right. the memories is, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, uh, it's, it's, man, it's, it just could go on and on about the memories I have of Joe Wise. And we probably could line up, God, I mean, thousands of guys who played for him mm -hmm. would say the same thing. Yeah. Just, just a great man. Just a great man. Uh, this is pretty much all, John. I could go on and on and, uh, about yeah. this, but let me uh, let me jump off. Right now. <laughs> okay. Well, right. we, we take a look at. We're getting ready to get started here in the second half of the football game, and we're going to see exactly what we got going on here. To talk okay. to the head coach of the Collinwood Cobras. And again, Damon Jones. Can you hear us, coach? Yes, sir. 2005 graduate of East High. He's been coaching and again played a little football and basketball in his high school day. But obviously, you had talked about it. You said, listen, we got to contain the outside. Now I can see why you were talking about it. They got some tremendous speed. Yeah, they do. So what is it that you told your guys at halftime? Uh, just like I reiterated when we talked before, they just got to make some tackles. they make some plays on defense, but we got to get our offense going as well. Yeah, Coach, uh, the offense is sputtering out there. You got some good talent out there, guys. Uh, they're playing hard. Blake Jones, Keyshawn Davis, Deion Lewis. Uh, you got some studs along with uh, uh, Carter Stoudemire. Uh, what's the plan to get those guys uh, – more effective in the second half? Uh, we switched up some things on defense, so we just finna lock in and try to get back to our cup of football like we did all year. All right, Coach, we're about to get started. I want to let you go. Good luck in the second half. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, John, Joe Record really hit it on the button when he talked about Joe Wise. What a tremendous icon in our community that will be sort of lost. Yes, yes. And he's a father figure for a lot of us, Tim. Uh, a, a lot of us. So Guinea Lee starts off, and we've got a tackle, and we got another flag on the, the turf. And in, when we looked at the halftime stats, it seemed like the, the penalties definitely played a role in hurting them as well as when the coach mentioned those missed tackles. You add that up, and that really that, that really is an a ingredient that's going to tell you that we're not going to have success. Yeah, that's a, that's a, those are some bad signs. Those are some bad signs, Tim. Uh, he's going to try to right the ship in his second half, and his coaches uh, got together, talked about it. Uh, hopefully they, these team, this uh, Cobra defense and offense will come out fired up. Right now, they got the Spartans going the right direction backwards due to that penalty, uh, but they still have to block and tackle these guys, and that's a tall task down 19 to nothing here early in the second half. So first down and 20 after the holding penalty. 
You know where they're going, John. Coming outside. Oh, oh, they stay inside. Good swarming defense right there. And on the tackle. It looks like it was number 12, Amirian Fonten. Mm -hmm. He's been like a beast on tackling, man. Yeah, yeah. Marion Fountain is uh, is doing a good job of staying active, freeing himself up and getting to the ball carrier. They got to bring him down on the first the first time they touch him, Tim. They can't let this team just keep running wild. They have too many weapons, so just concentrate on the man who, ha who has the football. Bring him down, hold him up, and hopefully you'll get some gang tackling in there. You have guys running to the football, so you can have multiple players over there to bring them down because they do a good job of breaking tackles as well. Second down, we'll call it 19, 18. Oh, boy. They're trying to run in and nothing doing. A big tackle right there. Didn't waste any time. Yeah, that looked like the quarterback made that tackle, Blake Jones. But look at it right here. Oh, that was 11. Was that 11 there? Yeah, that's Blake Jones, Tim. Blake Jones. Yeah, good job right there bringing the ball carrier down. He hunted him out and brought him down. So now it's third and long for the Spartans team. Cobras need just one more great effort on defense so they can get the ball back for the initial possession of the ball game, of the second half, I'm sorry. So again, they're talking about playing the solid defense. Making the tackles, third down. We're gonna call it about 16. Here they come, going to the outside. Oh, and he, he almost got it. Not this time, they were able to hold him. And again, on the tackle, again, that, that cornerback did not give way. Deion Lewis, he was there. Good job of bouncing the, bouncing the ball outside with the ball carrier, uh, but good job also by that defensive corner to stay home and shut it down. So third down, call it nine. And they're gonna get a decision if we're gonna go for it or if we're gonna do the automatic. This should be fourth down. They have the wrong thing on the down marker, but it is fourth down. And I'm going to call it about nine. And Coach Hills is going to elect to He's going to do ball. the punt. He's going to move it up the field. So Collinwood, just what the doctor ordered, come out here, give him three, and get him off the field. Let's get started. Okay. So Coach Jones, Coach Jones gave him a Gave him a good little pep talk, and they're starting this half off right. We will see how effective they can be on offense. So it'll be first down and 10. We're now honored by the, the great and the almost almighty. Juan King has finally arrived <laughs> on our stat crew and just enjoying every moment of it. Oh, yeah. Welcome, Juan. Welcome. You had to stop and get that breakfast. That's what it was, Coach. You had to stop and get breakfast. More like brunch, wasn't it? <laughs> brunch, maybe? Brunch, yeah. A little champagne. <laughs> Eggs Benedict. There you go. There you go. <laughs> or was it a uh, Bloody Mary? I should have asked him when he played. <laughs> did he show up in the second quarter or the first or the third? You know? <laughs> So here we go. Good snap. Good. Oh, the oh. Oh, there goes the tissue. Oh, my goodness. Is that, is that on offense? Face mask. Yeah, face mask. On the offense. Wow. Must have been a lineman. Maybe hands to the face. Definitely wasn't on the... Definitely wasn't on the uh, on the ball carrier. I don't know if we can pick it up on the instant replay or not. Oh my goodness, that's a big one too. That's a huge penalty. 
So it must wow. have been flagrant. Uh, hands to the face? See, that's got to be hands to the face. Well, he signaled the face mask where he grabbed somebody's face mask, and the way he threw it, it was I, a, I tell you what, the Cobras, they, they keep hurting themselves. Yeah. So yeah. first down and 20 behind the sticks. Here we go. So first down, we'll call it about 25. They're in the shotgun. Blake looking to throw. Low throw. And incomplete. Incomplete pass. Again, they're trying to get it outside to use that speed. I tell you, Tim, I'm not in favor of that play, especially for the, what you just mentioned, trying to get it outside to one of their speed guys when these elite Spartans are nothing but speed. You got to have a good throw out there. You got to have a quick throw. Uh, at this age group, you know, it's a little bit slower. The tempo is slower. Uh, but on defense, they was running. And so, as you saw in that play, they closed it down pretty quick, even though he dropped the football. It might have worked out better for him. They would have been looking at a loss on that play. Second down. Looking to throw. Threw it into double coverage, and now he got a couple flags. Got pass interference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so will they get a first down out of this, or would a would go with the ball? Is no, they'll foul the curve. They'll move it up. They get the yardage, but it's not like it's an automatic first down. But they'll uh, they'll get the yardage and a, a, uh, another down. Everybody used to think what well, was always an automatic first down, and uh, that's not the case anymore with the high schools and their rules. Okay, so they'll get another down. So it'll be second down, and about eight now. Second and eight. Three thirty to go. Third quarter. Coach lining them up for the Conway Cobras. Again, termite division coaches are on the field to help with instructions and teaching. These guys have got to get on track. There's the tackle, maybe a pickup of one, and that's about it. And, and now you flag. got another penalty because I believe the coach came in and did some instruction before he was supposed to. I think that's what they're going to call. And again, once that play starts, they cannot come in there and do any coaching. So once they get back, they back out, and the teams are ready to run the play, they can't come up and move anybody. And I think that's what they're calling. So this should be a 15 yarder. Personal foul against the offense. Personal foul against the defense. Oh, they're calling something that happened. And, and now we got ejected. an ejection on both sides. So now. Said number 10. Oh, number defense. 10 was ejected for the Spartans, huh? For the Spartans, and that's Tremaine Gilson, the left defensive end. So that means it wasn't the coach, it was something he did. I don't know if it was. Uh... And who was ejected for the Cobras? Nobody. Nobody. They only said that the, the defensive guy was ejected. They did not indicate the other player. So he must have initiated it. I'm thinking he initiated it. The other guy got up. He got his, and then he then it was something afterwards that caused the ejection. Stay right here. Come on, come on, come on. So we got too many coaches out there. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to get together, and the referees are talking. And again. Uh, 
While they're, while, they're, while they're doing this, it looks like they're getting ready to run another play. So as soon as they get done talking, it'll be third down and six. And it's 3-11 to go here in the ball game in the third quarter. And as we mentioned to you that we're going through these games, we still want to let you know about all the great free programs that are taking place at all your Cleveland Recreation Centers. And we hope you take advantage by contacting your local recreation centers. If you're not sure which recreation center that is near you, you can pick up the phone right now and call 664-2570. If you're in the Collinwood area, then you're talking about 420-8323. And in the Glenville community, Again, the Glenville Recreation Center is 664-2516. So here we go. They did accept the penalty, so it's second down. They're playing it over. Uh -oh. so that went the wrong way. Now he's going to break to the outside. Oh! And he could have a hole. Oh, Tim McCoy. Oh, good tackle. Got all the way down to the 29-yard line and a first down for the Collinwood Cobras. Elijah Burt, who's been all over the field, Tim, on defense especially, comes up with another tackle and a big tackle at that. If he didn't get him, uh, Blake Jones was definitely scooting into the end zone. And now we got a timeout on the field with Guinea, Guinea Lee. And it sounds like he took the timeout to settle him down. And they'll call him over. Obviously, uh, you know, when you talk about the coaches and trying to get back here to teach the kids, you know, we're going to sneak into the huddle here for the Collinwood Cobras, and we're going to try to hear what that coach has to say to his kids right here in this time. Out. Well, it looked like the coaches talking about a philosophy of getting the football to one of their key players and making sure he gets upfield. Cobras have been eating up the clock with this possession, I tell you. A oh, ball's on the ground. Ah. They didn't need that. And Jan, when you when you saw all those coaches talking about what here's what we want to do and then get out there to do it, you know that that kind of hurt them a little bit too because obviously when you get that time out, you want to spend some time talking to the kids and getting them to understand what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess they were making sure that they were all on the same page, but <clears throat> I didn't see it flow down to the players. Of course, they know what they have to do when they when they get their assignments for each play, but still, you want to you want to make sure they're locked in. Tough running, man! You hear those pads cracking? That's a quarterback <laughs> keeper went right behind the right guard and then broke to the outside. I'll tell you, there was some hitting going on, partner. Yeah, yeah. These kids, six, seven, and eight-year-olds. Number four, Elijah Bird again. He's the player that was getting up pretty slow, but doing another good job of putting the wood down on the on the quarterback. He took it around the left side. Excuse me, the right side. So this is third down. We're going to call it about five. Obviously, two down territory. Tell you what, Tim, watching, watching this uh, termite division this year, there were some very talented teams in this division. These two teams came out on top. See Blake trying on the left side, going to cut back up again. I think he got the first down. Wow, yeah, he did. That second effort is the one that did it, John. Mm -hmm. Man, Broke one tackle, tough. picked it up, first down. He is tough. I think it's a first down. I'm waiting. I thought I saw a signal for first down. Well, we got too many people out there on the field. 
and the clock. Oh, they, they stopped the clock to make sure they get the right placement of the ball. And it looks like a first down. And it is. So it is a first down. And right now they're on the 18 yard line. First and 10, 108 to go, third quarter. Ball oh, ball's on the turf. Collinwood keeps shooting themselves in the foot. I think wow. I tell my guys, all right, it's second down, let's go. Instead of first, because it seems like first down is the one that's hurt them. <laughs> they take that little step back. I think if they start running more north south, you know, I think they're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I think so too. They got a second down, about 12. Don't try the outside. That ball's in the inside arm. Outside, he's gone. 10. All the way down oh, 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 to about the seven yard line and another first down. The Collinwood Cobras. This is the deepest they've been in the territory. And this is where this is where practice comes in. Very important practice time comes in, Tim, when you gotta run a hurry up offense at this level. They want to try to score before the quarter, and they're trying to get him lined up. They do. No flags right up the middle, and he won't be going anywhere as we get ready to flip the field as we head into the fourth quarter. So that brings us to the end of three quarters of play. And again, the uh, defense of Guinea Lead have been able to hold them down. But their biggest challenge right now is right now they're going to be coming back. It'll be second and goal from the six yard line. Again, Tim, I can't tell you how remarkable it is. The performance of the defense of the Guinea Lee Spartans are holding this number one offense in the termite division to no point so far in this ball game through three quarters and they're averaging over 26 points per game. Just a great job of preparation, a great performance today uh, by the Spartans defense. And again, if you're six, seven, and you won't be eight uh, uh, before August 1st, you too can come out here and join us at, on this level of football and play for one of our teams. Just uh, go to our website. You can Google Cleveland Muni Football or go to CMF L, uh, CMFleague.org and check out the information on our website. Take a look at the organizations. Pick one in your neighborhood or pick one parents that you feel comfortable uh, kids playing with. Go out and take a look at their program. A lot of them have off-season programs like the Collinwood Cobras where they're year-round. They, they have basketball and they have track and they have flag football. So if you want to keep your young men and your young ladies uh, active, and yes, we do have girls who play football in our league. <laughs> and cheerleaders. And cheerleaders, yes, yes. Cheerleading is, is growing every year. It is really grown. And it's, I commend Stephanie Dunn and, and her staff and the job she does with them. Come on out and join us. CMFL, CMFleague.org. Or you can just Google Cleveland Muni Football and check out our YouTube channel. We have a Cleveland Muni Football YouTube channel. And we also have TV20 does a terrific job putting up these games on. So here they go. He's uh, got a great touchdown. <laughs> Just what the doctor had ordered. Yeah, Blake Jones has been 
working hard all day to get in the end zone. He's used to being in that in that fruitful area that gives him points, and he finally makes it here at the beginning of the fourth quarter, the fourth, the first play. And they will try to, for the extra point now. A little try here for the extra point. Oh, uh, still, man. You know, you know that wasn't happening. They were looking for that back here on the other end, and they got it. They stopped it. Mm -hmm. they had one good run there, and then he went that route. So 19 to six. Here at just into the fourth quarter, so we got plenty of time. There's 7:52 to go in the ball game. Again, the Guinea Leets, as you can see them, they're leading 19 to six. Again, the coaches is Malcolm Jones. Malcolm Hills. Hills. And then Damon Jones has got the Collinwood Cobras. Mm -hmm. And they've got a great bunch of guys that help them to make it happen. You gotta have a lot of patience with these kids. Yeah, you do. You do the more teaching then you actually do coaching. And they're pretty much one and the same, but the consistency that you need to get out of the kids at this age uh, is what's most important for them to be able to, to carry out an assignment, remember their responsibilities, and then uh, practice those responsibilities. Do their job. Everybody do your job. Who's, who's most famous for saying do your job? Has won the winning his coaches in NFL history by the name of Bill Belichick. So if you get 11 guys, especially at this age group, that can do, that will do their job, you can be a very successful coach. So first down and 10. And we got a penalty flag. We got a equipment infraction. It is a penalty if you're not wearing your equipment properly. So at this level, they get that warning the first time, and then after that, it'll be the yardage. Mm -hmm. They turn him back inside, Jim, but nobody's in there. He's going the wrong way, John. <laughs> he was just trying. There's another flag. Looks like it might be on the offense. Sure does. You see Coach Hill going off like that. And he knew it. He knew they did something wrong. Personal foul. And that person's ejected. We had some ejections in this game. Now we got one on that side. Uh, and that will be, who's that, number two? Yeah, it looks like it was number two. Hey, folks, sometimes it's hard to see the numbers on these jerseys. They blend in so well with the colors. But if it's number two, then that would be. Bryce Jones. Right there. Blake, step up. Mm. Hey, hey, hey. Was it number eight? I know I saw a two come oh, off, Tim, no, but no, I didn't. Uh... So here we go. First down and ten. They're at the 45 yard line. Cobras need a stop. That didn't help at all. 7.18 to go. Okay. We got 12 men on the field on defense, I believe. Oh, my. And you got a coach out there. Yeah. I didn't see. We got one. Here's, here's the guy that comes off now. They put two people on there when the when the one guy got ejected, huh? And 
if that is Bryce Jones who got ejected, he's a very important player on this team, one of the key players. And that makes their job even tougher to climb back in this ball game. But they got to get off the field. They got to get the ball back to the offense. Tight formation. Uh oh. I don't see a Cobra over there. Big yardage, first down. Yanny leads Spartans. There it is, that man against Carter, Carter Hendrick. We had a big run in the first half that led to pay dirt. We got a Cobra down. Well, folks, since they're going to take care of this, we'll take a break and we'll be back with more of the 2021 Termite Championship game. Need food? We can help. The Greater Cleveland Food Bank's Benefits Outreach Department works within the community to help individuals locate food and apply for SNAP and other public benefits. Weekdays, our help center accepts phone calls from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and walk-ins from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 216-738-2067 or stop in our facility at 15500 South Waterloo Road. Our benefits outreach counselors are out in the community every day assisting with benefit enrollment and connecting the community to vital resources. Keep your eye out for our food truck, providing free, fresh produce and SNAP enrollment in the community. For more information, visit www.greaterclevelandfoodbank.org slash get help. Welcome back to Collinwood Field. You've been watching the 2021 Termite Championship game. The Guinea lead on offense. They'll take the snap and they're gonna try to run to the outside and they ran right into that linebacker. And it was Blake Jones that made the stop and Kaylin Ward. Well, it's not time to quite celebrate yet uh, that Collarwood defender. They have to, they have to slow him down a, a little bit more. We got to stop him on this drive from scoring so they can get offense back to ball. Second down, we'll call it about five. Well, more or less seven, I think we're looking at now. So here we go, second down. They're gonna came right off the guard spot. He was a big hole, big hole. Uh, the whistle blue, guys, the whistle blue. That was Tamar and Motley and legend Clayton open that hole up for him. And making the tackle, it looked like it was Lamar Logan and Jaden Dodds. Looks like they're going to try it right up the middle. Tight formation. Had to find the football. He got him down. So again, elite. He's trying to do the sportsman-like thing. And taking, taking their time on, on trying to get this ball into the end zone. Marion Walker and Logan, Lamel Logan on the stop. And we have a timeout by Collinwood as they stop the clock here with 4.08 to go. Obviously, the clock has become a friend of the Guinea Elite Spartans. We got a fourth down and two, John. Obviously, uh, if you're if you're Guinea Elite, what, what are you going to run here? I'm going to go outside. I'm going to get my speed. I'm going to use my speed. I'm going to get it to, to my playmakers. Looking at getting it to, of course, Mr. <laughs> Carter Hendricks has been effective all day long. Uh, Brendan Patterson, Mark Johnson, and uh, Elijah Burt, he also can carry the mail too. So 
They just need to pick one of those guys and, and get them up, get them, get them outside. So this this will be interesting. And again, folks, remember that after this game, we'll have the presentation of the awards. We'll be selecting an outstanding offense and defensive player. Everybody get back there. Coach will have to motivate them. So they're all coming. We're blitzing, baby. You heard it there. Now we'll see if they can execute it. Yeah. So fourth down. Big play right here. So you can see Coach Hill getting his offense in a tight formation to protect the protect the ball carrier and that football. They won't want to, they don't want a turnover. We got too many people on the field again. Good job. They was able to bring him down. That was that was Burt. Blake Jones carried. came up and made the stop. And that should, if you take a look at it again right here, almost lost the football. Wow. So Aiden Irons also in on there. Mm-hmm. So they'll turn the ball over on downs, but not after chewing up half of this fourth quarter. As you remember, the Cobras scored a touchdown in the first play of the fourth quarter. They missed on the uh, the extra point try. But since then, the Guinea League Spartans have had the football, and they just ran the clock down to where the Cobras only have half the quarter left. So they need a quick strike right here. Blake Jones and Deion Lewis, Keyshawn Davis. They got to get the ball in one of their playmakers, one of their playmakers' hands. So first down and ten. They will start on the 18-yard line. And this is when you know. The coaching and preparation really comes in to play uh, when you when you when you have a deficit like this and you and you're fighting against the clock as well as your opponent, Tim. Uh, it's tough to run a hurry up offense and a hurry up defense uh, on this level because of the limitations uh, of the kids' uh, 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 football IQ. But if you got a good group together, you can put it together. Looking to throw. Wide open, got it. <laughs> and he, he did run it with him. Hold on that ball. All the way out to the 45 yard line. How did they let him get behind him? That's an excellent job by this lefty right here. And Blake Jones, second time, <laughs> he caught it twice. Or he tipped it to himself, but excellent concentration shown by Irons right there and strength to make it difficult for the defenders of the Spartans to bring him down. That's Caden Irons with the reception. And again, pinnacle second grader on the tackle. Elijah Burt. Now they're going to try to run outside. He's got the outside. He does. He does. Could be. Speed. Oh. Wow. Got a personal foul. There's a penalty in the backfield. We got personal foul. Is it against? Is it going to be against the Cobras? I don't know. But I'm waiting to see what the official is going to say. Yeah. It's a shame because it didn't have any effect on the play. I'm yeah, sure. that was. Uh, wow. Line up! Line up! So he's 
going to pick it up. He's going to wave it off. Yep. He's going to wave it off. I like that call. Didn't affect it. Didn't, didn't affect the play. That's the first time I heard John Good, a football player and a coach, say I like your call. <laughs> Here he comes again uh -huh. to the other side. Uh -huh. Good step, uh -huh. 20. Uh -huh. Still wow. the Blake Jones. Determination. Blake Jones. He's brought down by number seven, Elijah Smith, the safety. Uh, he's going to sleep good tonight. He's going to have a nice little nap uh, this afternoon because he has been running and running and running. Collinwood calls time. I don't think they wanted it, but they took it. Yeah, they want to try to keep as many of those in their back pocket as possible, Tim, as they try to climb back into this football game. But if you're going to call a timeout, let's get some coaching done. Let's get some discussion done amongst the coaches so you can decide what you want, what you want to do. As you see on your screen, Blake Jones in the different phases of that last run he just had doing an excellent job of putting his team in the position to come up with another score. 2.59 to go in the ball game. So it'll be first down and 10 from the 17. Get some coaching done to, with the boys so that everybody's on the same page. And they can punch this ball into the end zone. Tim, if they punch this ball in the end zone, we could have a, a good game could going be. down the stretch. <laughs> Termite division. Don't know what you're going to get. You never know. Oh, yeah. We've had 0-0 zero, zero ties, overtime, 6-6. Six, six. Someone finally scores a point right before the end of the game. Oh, the receiver wasn't even looking for the ball. Got to be on the same page, guys. Second down, 10. 253. Looked like his intended receiver might have been number eight, Deion Lewis. But it's tough, it's tough to tell when nobody looks back for the football. I don't like the call, though. I tell you that. I, you know, even though I love passing, being a, being a tight end, a former tight end, uh, they've had success running to the outside. I would put Blake Jones over there with a few blockers and Go to the wide side of the field, just tell him to put his foot in the ground and burst up field. He's going to try to the left. He sees a hole inside, takes that. Good, tough run. So it's been all Blake Jones, Tim, on this drive. They got to unpile quickly so they can get back up, get get back, get in the huddle and get back on the on the ball. But it looks like looks like Collinwood is ready to ready to uh, go right now. So we got third down, we call it two. They need to definitely pick up the first down and preferably score here. So, quick look at the Wolverines as they get ready for the next game. Wide open, he's got it, and he dropped. Wow. Broke it up. Actually, yeah, it was broken up by the defensive back on that play. Good job by the defense. So, excellent job of defending on that pass. Was the defensive back for the Guinea Elite Spartans. It looks like Elijah Burt is the one that knocked the, defended the pass. So now, what's more important, fourth down and two with two minutes to go here in the ball game. 
Yeah, if I was them, I would definitely run to the outside where I can get the sideline and pick up the first down. The ball is on the on the left hash mark, so I'm gonna take my chances running right. Especially with the quarterback that I have. Oh no. Wow. What a way to end the series. Wow. Uh, Taj Dudley came up with the fumble recovery. And oh truthfully, he uh, it was just a case where he didn't pick up the ball. Yeah, he couldn't, you know, Tim, it, it, it went right through his hands on, at the snap. Ball's down on the ground, and, you know, instead of him just jumping on the football or trying to pick it up, it was fourth down, trying to make a play with it. He couldn't find it, and the defender was right there. I mean, nobody touched him. He was blitzing. He was on top of him so fast that he didn't even have a chance to uh, to pick it up. So now it looks like Guinea Lead is going to try to get in players that did not play. Uh, much during this game so that they can have experience of a championship game. A lot of those guys that's in the ball game right now will probably be starters next year. So it'll be first down and 10. They'll take it over at the 17-yard line. But what a bright future that this Gandy Elite organization have, and, and so do the Collinwood Cobras. Getting here to this championship game, they have, I believe, two other teams in the championship series this year. So they're consistent. They had three in 19. Last year, of course, we didn't play because of uh, the virus outbreaks. But uh, the Cobras are staying uh, consistent and true and showing that they are forced to deal with in this league. Coach Darnell Banks uh, doing just a great job over there with his community and with his, uh, with his team. So Collinwood calls a timeout. I believe they only had one more. And I may be wrong, they might have one left. I think that would be it. So, John, when you when we look at this game, obviously uh, these are the future kids that we'll see year after year for a while. Um, obviously, there's a lot of speed. I don't know if you remember a few weeks ago we did the junior division, which many of these kids will move into. And if you remember when uh, Jason had given the outstanding player of the game to the one guy uh, on the offense. And if you remember, he said to him, well, is there anything you really want to say? And he, if you remember, he said, well, I'm fast. <laughs> He's going to have some competition with fast coming up. Am I right, John? <laughs> he is going to have some competition because there's going to be some guys joining him on that level uh, that can move pretty good the doggone self. Uh, maybe uh, I think the young man we're talking about, the number one uh, track, uh, person in, the, in his age group in the state of Ohio. So uh, he wasn't uh, misleading us when he told us he was fast. But uh, he's going to have some competition next year because uh, these guys, uh, they, can, they can play. Uh, Patterson, Hendrick, Johnson, Burt, Maxwell, and they're tough. And, you know, don't forget about uh, the tight end Smith as well. So third down and nine. And clock will run, which tells me that Collinwood has probably used up all their timeouts. So they'll still have to take a couple snaps here. And the defense of this, uh, of this Guinea League Spartans, I believe uh, the, the Spartans have chosen to uh, lean on defense in all their teams in, in the league. I mean, they, they're, they're in the tops as far as defense and, and all of them. And, uh, I guess that might be due to the background of, of Coach Hiley because he was a fine defensive player uh, in this league and an outstanding high school defensive player and an even better college player at Ohio State. 
So this is their fourth down. You got to believe they're going to let the. You would think they're going to let the clock run, or are they going to take the automatic punt and move it? I would think they're going to let the clock run out right here. Yep. We're down to the last 10 seconds of the game. Spartans are your tournament champions. A lot of happy people. <laughs> and the Collinwood kids, nothing to be ashamed of. No, they don't. You had a successful season. You came in here undefeated. Yep. And today was just marred with some Obviously, uh, fumbles and mistakes and false starts and pre-snap penalties. But at the end of the day, it was truly a day for the termites out here at Collinwood Field. Yeah, it was, Tim. A lot of, <clears throat> a lot of distraction out here with uh, the penalties. Uh, I think this, this game I will remember for a long time because I don't think I've ever seen three players ejected in a championship game before. Uh, the referees, you know, kept control. Uh, they enforced the rules. Uh, there were a lot of penalties, too many penalties uh, this time of the season. Uh, but the elite pardons were able to make more plays than the Cobras and come out with this victory here today. Well, folks, stay with us because when we come back, our league director, Jason Dunn, will be down on the field for the award presentation and the outstanding defense and offensive players. Slow down. Slow down and move over. And move over. When you see lights, vests, or reflectors, please give us some room. Slow down and move over. When you need us, we've got your back. Do you have ours? You got our back? You got ours? You got our back? Please, slow down. And move over. As doctors, we, we know, know African, -Americans African Americans are more, are more likely, likely to acquire and die from complications of the COVID-19 virus. Why? Because people of color suffer from higher rates of chronic medical conditions. Like, like diabetes, diabetes and, obesity. and obesity. High blood pressure. Heart and, and kidney, kidney disease. disease. And asthma. All of these lower our immune system and the ability to fight off viruses. Being, Being an essential worker and even using public transportation increased the risk of getting COVID-19. But, but we, we can, can better, better protect, protect ourselves, ourselves and others from, from the virus. virus. Washing your hands. Not, not touching, touching your, your face, face. Wearing a mask in public. Social distancing. Eating, eating better, better. Exercising. Getting, getting more sleep. sleep. And visiting a primary care provider for health checks. Will we'll all make a difference. difference. If you have questions, call the number on the screen. And visit our website. Let's, Let's work, work together, together to, to save lives and be the same. This is League Director Jason Dunn. I am now down on the field at the conclusion of the 2021 Termite Division Championship game between the Guinea Lee Spartans and the Collinwood Cobras. We had a hard fought and great championship game today, so give it up for both teams. So I want to first start the reward ceremony off with a specialty award. I am now down joined by the Collinwood Cobras who have the defensive player of the game. And the defensive player of the game is number seven, I mean number 11, Blake Jones. Blake Jones carried the load on defense with a total of seven, of seven tackles with three stops in the loss for the, in the backfield. Blake played a tremendous game on both sides of the ball. Blake, you played real hard. You gave it all you had. Would you like to thank anybody today? I would like to thank my coaches and my teammates and my family. 
Blake, you played a tremendous job today. You've done a great job all season long. So from your efforts today and the hard work you put in all season, you are the defensive player of the game. Thanks, Blake. All right, Blake. All right. I would now like to bring up head coach Dame Jones. Right, it's fine. Yeah. Coach, you guys had a tremendous regular season, made a great run, and put together one of the most impressive seasons for a termite team in, in recent years. Just let's just talk about the hard work and the dedication that you and your staff put in along with the parents for this year. Um, I just want to take the time out, man, and thank all the parents out there who showed dedication to making sure that their kids got to practice. I want to thank my coaching staff. They did an excellent job. Shout out to my man Bo for coming along, getting his offense to where it's at. And another thing, man, just hats off to them guys. They played a great football game. I can't take nothing from them. And the better team won today. So I would like to now congratulate and pass over the 2021 runner-up trophy to the Collinwood Cobras. I'm gonna now go over here and join the champs. I am now down on the field, joined by the 2021 Termite Division Champions, the Guinea Elite Spartans! So the Spartans put together a really impressive performance today. They had a number of kids that could have been named the offensive MVP, but only one stood out today, and that is number two, Brennan Patterson. So, so Brendan Patterson had a total of 61 yards rushing with one touchdown, and he had a number of big runs, and he shouldered the load for the offense today. Brendan, would you like to make some thanks today? Thank you. Who would you like to thank, Brendan? My grandpa. You like to thank your grandpa? Okay, anyone else? Rest in peace to him. Yeah, and rest in peace, grandpa. Great job, Brendan. Brendan, for your performance today, would like to give you the 2021 player of the game, off of the player of the game. Okay. Thanks, Brendan. So now I want to bring up the head coach for the Guinea Lee Spartans, Coach Malcolm. That's my coach. <laughs> hey, coach. Uh, great, uh, first and foremost, great job today. You guys look really prepared. Uh, you guys started out the regular season, lost the first game of the year. And just to see how you guys rebounded after that first loss, you know, what, what, what did it take to get to this point after losing that first game, and how did you write the ship after that? Uh, just teamwork and a lot of hard work from the coaches and the parents just keeping everybody here. Um, we just had to rebound and get back together. That first game, we had three touchdowns called back, so we felt like we won the game, but in the end, you can't, you know, it, the score didn't reflect that. So we had to just come, out, come back and get better. That was it. Okay. First year program, but an experienced group of coaches and experienced group of kids. Congratulations, Coach. You guys are the 2021 Termite Division Champions. Hey, I'm going to now toss it back up to you, Tim. Thank you, Jason. And, yes, it was a tremendous day for a lot of great young kids out here in the termite division. And, John, I'll tell you what, when you watch them every year, you always say, are they going to run the right way? But it seems like they've gotten better and better as they've gone through the season where we really are now making some progress. Yeah, Tim, uh, these kids on this level, you're very surprised at their football IQ and the plays that they make out here on the field. The elite teams, Spartans, they came, they showed up. Uh, they've been doing it all year. Again, I, just very impressed with the way they run, they, uh, they gang tackle, and on, 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 on offense, uh, their explosiveness and knowing what to do with the football. 
uh, hats off to Darius Hiley and the Guinea Elite Spartans. Congratulations, 2021 Termite Champions. Well, obviously, folks, uh, it doesn't end today, and we do want to remind you that next week, John and Jason will be back here for the Bantamweight Champions. Again, that's the big boys, 12 to 14, no weight limit. The two teams that will be squaring off will be the West Side Wolverines and the Sims Raiders Showtime. But for this day, it belongs to the Termite Division and our city champions, the Guinea Elite Spartans, with a final score of 19 to 6. So let's take a look at some of the faces and some of the great plays that were part of the 2021 championship game. So for John Good, I'm Tim Wells. Good night, everyone.